a big one, Jerry. On that play, Jerry, it seemed as though the Boulders may have had a little slant on with their defensive linemen because uh, they both seemed to slant into the holes on that play and uh, watching the offensive linemen for Tom trying to block them was almost impossible if they went right into the hole. Tom Riffle, the longtime uh, defensive coordinator uh, in the RFL, working for the, uh, the Sun recently, uh, going back to the old uh, playbook, got a 35 defense happening. Punt is away, it's a good, good, high towering punt that's gathered in about the 22 yard line. Looking to the left is Davy Duke, he gets to the outside again, it's a foot race to the sideline, lowers his head and takes on the attacker. Number 34 for the Trojans, who is Rob Peterson, the starting fullback and inside linebacker. Good position again for the Sun. Oh, just getting back to that 35 defense, I think that's an indication that in last week's 30-0 uh, victory over the Titans, the uh, Tom Trojans had uh, in excess of 400 yards rushing and zero yards passing. So uh, Tom Riffle was saying, well, they're not going to pass anyway, but I do understand that Tom is capable of throwing the ball. Yes, their, their quarterback, young Sheldon Thomas, does have a good arm, and uh, with Morris Butler there uh, running the offensive backfield, uh, a former professional receiver, you can expect him to want to put the ball up. Davy Duke, to a good, good uh, movement, uh, gives him the old limp leg twice, and uh, he's ahead for ver very close to a first down, perhaps a nine-yard gain. Well, I was really impressed on that, uh, Jerry. Uh Watching him run there, David Duke there, he did an excellent job of uh, just sticking the leg out and then taking it away, as you said, the old limp leg. And that's a really impressive move for a young ball carrier like that. And uh, to have that kind of body control and to be 6'1 and 195 pounds just seems to go a long way. Yes, David Duke having played last year in Icuna, Saskatchewan, six man football provincial champions, I believe, and uh, uh, just terrorized the league that he was playing in. Randy Zabitnik, the quarterback, the ball's on the ground, it's recovered by the Trojans. David Duke unable to hold on that time. Well, he got hit pretty good. I don't know if that ball was stuck in there right quite solidly, but he got hit pretty good on that play. Uh, sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. The big 52 is Doug Felton. He's just having a field day in there. I don't know if he's that good. He might be cheating on his block, but I don't think so because he's really controlling the middle of that, uh, that uh, defense right now. According to the Silver Fox, Alex Smith, uh, uh, Big Felton is close to 260 pounds, about six foot two. So a big, big young man for high school football. There's Austin, the first back through is the fullback Pedersen, and he's got himself a short gain on the left side. Well, there we see those guys, the Lobolos guys really coming up and feeling hard, Jerry. Uh, they're just not respecting any kind of a passing thing right now. Their defensive backs are with all within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage in the play. Yeah, they've, uh, very strange kind of alignment it looks like Brian they've got three defensive linemen and uh, nine uh, linebackers as far as I can tell uh, certainly everyone's close to line of scrimmage second and long however they drop off their backs a little bit still in that 35 look oh. uh, broken play I guess as uh, Thomas heads right uh, uh, naked with no blocking, uh, no one with him at all, and he's gathered in pretty quick, quickly. I believe that was the left linebacker, Steve Bauer, number 48, who was there to make the tackle. Well, there was really good penetration again on that line, and I'll just see in the replay here if we can see whether they're shooting the gaps or what. Well, nobody picked up those two outside men at all. I guess it could have been a, uh, a broken play, but they just came right in there. Two flags, and I believe they'll both be against uh, O'Neill, uh, or against O'Neill, the O'Neill sweaters maybe, but against the, uh, the Boulder Golden Suns, I believe the first one will be a contacting or a roughing the kicker, and I think the other one will be an illegal block against the uh, Boulder. Uh, it looks to me as though somebody blocked below the waist on that, Jerry.
sign there, Jerry. I think he's going to march off 15 yards because uh, in the initial indication when he was talking to the captains, he had signaled a block below the waist, which is 15 yards, and I think that's automatically uh, considered a roughing penalty and added on to the play. And uh, the Bulls is going to have to watch that because I know in their game against Martin, there's three or four incidents on uh, punts and kickoffs where they block below the waist, which is illegal in amateur football, and they could get called as they just did there, and that's very harmful to them. Nice tackle. Oh, he just penetrated and, and very sure tackling. The Boulders is famous for their sure tackling football teams. They have for years. And uh, the old saying that uh, football still comes down to blocking and tackling, and he who does it best will do the rest of the things well, and they really tackle well. knocked out of him, I think, Jerry. That's a lot of credit to the coaching staff and the, and the administration over there that really pushed the program, and uh, they've got a lot of kids out. a perfect strike. Uh, the receiver got in behind there on the play, and the defender had pretty good coverage on. He went up as high as he could, but the ball just cleared him and came right down to rest in the belly of the receiver, as we'll see here on the replay. Good blocking. Everybody's picked up, and a beautiful throw. Three fifty nine remaining to be played here in this uh, RAFL game. The uh, Tom Trojans ahead six to nothing. Thank you. See, number sixty will be handling the kickoff chores for the uh, Trojans. That's John Rudrum, one of their offensive linemen, and. Uh, Really a, a, a strange situation last year. As the man you were mentioning, Big Scott Felton, was handling the kickoffs uh, uh, in the first game, and uh, uh, you, if he got an inch a pound, it was a good kick for him. Uh, <laughs> didn't well, seem to be able to get his foot into the ball. Well, Rudrum gets his foot into the ball essentially the same way. High punt coming down, and it's free on the ground, and they got like it. Got it. Got it. The big plays are going all the way to the black and white early in this game. Number 21 was the man that came up the for the ball there for the Trojans, Jerry. That's uh, Colin Buller from, from the Tom Trojans getting down to the ball, just deflected off the uh, in the Boulder's Golden Sun receiver, and he was just down there like a shot. Him and number 35, uh, Nolan Naradar. I don't know how you say that, but anyway, they did an excellent job of getting down there. And that the Trojans or the uh, Golden Suns didn't have a lot of time to work on their kickoff returns last year. I think they, they kicked out or returned one last week, so uh, they could be a little rusty in that part of it. Lots of motion being shown in the Tom backfield. Here's option. Thomas uh, deals the ball, it's gathered in by Tilly, and he's uh, put his head down. He's down close to the 35-yard line, about a two or three-yard gain on the play. Well, 
was a pretty decent uh, play there. The, the Golden Suns really came up the field while the uh, loop that old pitch over top of somebody's head. And that's all right if the quarterback knows that uh, nobody's coming up on a play. But if they're coming up hard to fill, that's going to be a dangerous play to hang that ball up in the air that long, Jerry. Second and seven from the 33-yard line, pardon me, the 35-yard line of the LaBolda Suns. Slot back, split end right, tight end left. Still in the wishbone. There's option to the left-hand side, and uh, again, uh, swarming LaBolda's defense is right there. I believe that was number 42 for the Suns, uh, Carlos Butner, the defensive end, who was slanting into the hole. Yeah, he was right in there right away, Carlos Butner on the play, and uh, made a good tackle. Again, they are getting excellent penetration. Uh, uh, Don Riffle seems to have really scouted uh, well, and they're uh, gambling on a lot of plays and uh, blitzing the right holes. This time on 37, the uh, Trojans decide to put, put on the field, or the punt team, and a high wavering snap. Kicking ahead, a good punt this time. It's driving, it hits the upright, and uh, of course the ball goes immediately dead in, in all facets of football. Handling the punting chores, number 36 for the Trojans, uh, showing his good leg twice is Kelly Allen, a grade 11 student. Yeah, that was an excellent punt, he just hung that up there, and I'm not used to seeing the Tom Trojans punt. Uh, well, during my seven or eight years there, we, we tried to make it a habit to punt no more than three times a year. So I always wanted to go with those three punts in the first game so we'd never have to punt again. Well, I'll never forget the third and 16 play from your own 10 yard line that you guys turned into a touchdown. First and 10 for the LaBolda Suns from their own 10 yard line, uh, courtesy of that dead ball, uh, which hit the upright. And we see them coming in the I formation again. Davey Duke, the tailback. First back through is Kerr, and the ball's on the ground, and uh, Tom has got it again, as just uh, everything that uh, LaBolda touches turns to ashes here early in the first quarter. 147 remaining in that first quarter, and Tom got the ball in great field position. Well, they lead the game 6 up and they're threatening here, and again, they had pretty good penetration on the play, but it just seemed like there was a trouble on the exchange again. I don't know if LaBolda's is... Uh, a little upset or what, we see Chris Kern walking off with his helmet in his hand looking dejected and uh, you know, he's just got to shake that off and buckle down and they got a lot of, they moved the ball really well the first time they had it, they just shoot themselves in the foot all the time. There's Thomas on the option getting to the right hand side and uh, he lowers his head, he's a small young man really. Uh, I, I guess around 5'8", 140 pounds, maybe 145, but uh, a reasonably tough runner. He's ahead for seven yards. It's going to be second and three. Well, they've got room to pick up the first down uh, without scoring the touchdown yet, Jerry, so that's uh, always an advantage when you're in close. The Trojans coming off, as I mentioned earlier, a, a winless season last year and, uh, and really hoping to be able to turn the program around. There's option left this time, and uh, Thomas flips the ground right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, it was going to be tight whether or not he made the first down in any, any case, but he's going to be short by three yards. Oh, yes. Well, we'll have a nice turf burn to take home, Jerry. Those turf burns are sure ugly. You see that the Trojans are going for this as a play being run in by the wide receiver to the from uh, uh, offensive coordinator... Morris Butler. Third down and three and a half, maybe closer to four. Going to be close to the last play of the first quarter with 18 seconds remaining. As a rollout, it's uh, option pass and wide open in the end zone is the tight end. That's Steve Day. Uh, again, second time they go to the air, second touchdown for the Trojans and, uh, and really uh, not much of a surprise to me as I, I had talked to the head coach, Alex Smith, and they were holding, hoping to hold back their passing game last year and not show anything at all to Tom Ripple. Well, they certainly have caught him flat-footed. Number 24 wasn't close enough to throw a brick at him and stop him here as we see on the replay. This is just lofted up and, hey, there's nobody here. Boy, that was pretty easy. A little, uh, little bit of adjusting for Coach Ripple to do here as far as his pass coverage goes. I think Tom's an old man, and he's been around the game a long time, so he'll probably do some adjustment. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Eight seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Score now 12 for the Trojans, nothing for the LaBolus Golden Sun. His rollout by Thomas throwing it up, and it's just beyond the outstretched hands of the receiver. I couldn't pick up the number, Brian. 
Number 26, I believe, for the Trojans would be George Schick. Yes, Schick, pardon me. Even though that was incom incomplete, Jerry, the, the receiver had run that uh, pattern underneath the defender and had that ball been delivered, that would have been a two-point convert for sure because that defender was playing pretty soft on him and he had room to complete it. As the first quarter winds to an end with eight seconds remaining, the score remains 12 for the uh, Tom Trojans, zero for the Boulder Golden Sun. Uh, the interesting thing on the scoreboard right now, although Tom is ahead by 12 points, not 13 as the screen, 12 as the screen says exactly, uh, only one first down registered for each team so far as the, uh, the Trojans would be masters of the opportunity. Well, yes, and I mean, uh, the Bowlers has done everything they could possibly do on fumble kickoff return, fumble a couple uh, uh, running plays, and uh, they still only trail by 12 nothing, and uh, they just got to get their offense in gear. Here's Kern, he'll run hard. Gathered the ball in about his own 22-yard line, lowers his head, and he's up past the 40. So relatively better in backfield for the LaBolda's Golden Suns uh, in the offense. Uh, Chris Kern is in his third year uh, with the Trojans, or with the uh, Suns, uh, a grade 12 uh, running back, started at fullback last year. Randy Zabitnik, although he didn't start last year, James Volhoffer, an outstanding quarterback now with the Regina Rams, did, uh, saw some action at the quarterback position last year. Of course, a famous name in Regina football. Uh, the son of Jerry Zabitnik, uh, former head coach of the Rams, a former linebacker with the University of Saskatchewan Huskies. There's the toss to Davy Duke, and he's got the outside again. Good block by Curran, and Davy Duke rambles to the outside. Finally driven out, out of bounds, I believe, by the safety, number 16, Mark Red Marv Redicke. Well, Brad Kopp, uh, number 17 for the uh, Boulder Suns, uh, really came down and did a good job of blocking the outside man in and letting Davy, David Duke get outside. Uh, if we do happen to see a replay, it was just a super block. Uh, pinches him down, and David uh, just read the block and cut it outside. It was just an excellent play, but Brad Kopp really made a nice block on it. As the first quarter winds to an end, the score remains 12 nothing for the Trojans, but uh, Lebolis, uh, when they're not busy, as you mentioned, shooting themselves in the foot, looking very, very impressive with their running game, as they seem to be able to get to the outside uh, anytime they desire against the Trojans. Having a hard time running up the middle with Curran or Davy Duke inside, but uh, getting to the perimeter pretty easily. Oh, definitely. They can, they can put points on the board pretty quick, I'll tell you that. I witnessed it on field level last week. There's the Bitnick back to pass, uh, throwing to wide open Kopp, who's uh, gathered in about the 47-yard line. It's going to be a short game and perhaps three on the play. Uh, good coverage that time by the Trojans in back. Look at number 12, Steve Tilly. He just came up there and made an excellent tackle again. And you know what we were talking about earlier about blocking and tackling winning football games, Jerry. Uh, uh, these are the best two tackling football teams I've seen this year in the RFL. And, uh, you know, there's been some excellent tackles out there. The starting offensive line for the uh, LaBolas Golden Suns, uh, again, a pretty famous name, Scott McNeil, the, the son of Jack McNeil, longtime uh, uh, coach in the RIFL, commissioner of the RIFL, used to work for the Riders, assistant GM, as in his second year starting at center. There's Curran this time rambling, and he's down to close to the 40-yard line. It's going to be about three yards short of the first down, and decision time for head coach Harry Duke. Uh, Chris Kern is uh, showing a little lack of discipline out there, Jerry. Uh, he's a heck of a running back. I've been a fan of his for two years now, but uh, he's throwing another little bit of a tantrum out there. And I think if Chris had just settled on and run the ball like he can, save his energy there, he could destroy some defenses. Uh, you know, maybe he's a little ticked off. Maybe his girlfriend's mad at him or something. I don't know, but Chris will settle on. He'll run the ball well. Big play for the Suns. Third and four inside the 42-yard uh, line of the Trojans. The Bitnick handing off to Davy Duke. He's got a gaping hole off right tackle. It's a foot race for the end zone now, and I, I believe he's got everyone beat there. Even the angle man cannot get to him. A 42-yard touchdown ramble off that hole for uh, Byron Davy Duke, number 35 of the Lavolta Suns, and he's three old guys. Oh, there's a great block in there again, Jerry, by, uh, by number 15, I believe it is, at the top of your screen, and, and just a super block. Chris Curran comes and helps the steal, and it's six points. 15, uh, Aaron Run just did a super job as you saw in that replay there. And uh, what you do is you lead back with Chris Curran. There's over to him from block, and he just peeled off the outside. David Deke just cut through the middle, cut it outside, and boy, he's gone. That was a great play. Aaron Run, uh, you mentioned earlier, is uh, doubling a two way player, uh, also starting at inside linebacker in that 35 look. The uh, point after touchdown is through for the LaBolda's Golden Suns, and the uh, first ones uh, to put a point after touchdown on the board, if not the first ones to put a touchdown on the board, 
Score is now 12 for the Tom Trojans, 7 for the Labolda Golden Suns, and this uh, RAFL game is heating up quickly. Oh, Jerry, I see this is the thing we were just talking about there. Labolda looked good on the first time they had the ball, and uh, then the next two times they just uh, they just shot themselves a the quicker. Oh, we won't use different expression later on. But anyway, uh, this time they got the ball and controlled it good, and away they went. They've got a heck of an offense that can score at all times from anywhere in the field. This David Duke, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, what I've seen of him in uh, in about six quarters of football, he looks like the best back I've seen in this league in a long time. That's saying a lot. Mind you, I saw a couple good ones just a little early in a big upset game. Sheldon Williams beating the Miller Marauders 23-20. And that's Paul Cozan for Sheldon is a heck of a running back. Yes, he certainly is a fine running young man. Uh, Darcy Gollum will be handling the kickoff chores for the uh, uh, the Golden Sun. The ball coming down inside the 20-yard line, gathering that in, I believe, is uh, Steve Tilly. He lowers his yeah. hand and Mack down to the turf right at the 30. That's number 17, uh, Brad Cop. Brad Cop, the starting uh, wing back, who's one. down there Three. and uh, makes the tackle. Boy, Brad Cobb, and I was just going to say, that Brad Cobb has really impressed me this game uh, with his blocking and his downfield tackling and everything like that. He looks like a heck of a player. The starting defense for the Suns has number 62, Scott McNeil, the two-way player at the nose, uh, Sonny Fonio and Carlos Butner, who also are offensive linemen at uh, each end. The outside linebacker, Steve Bauer, number 48, and the aforementioned Brad Cobb outside. Inside linebackers are Brad Mitko, 5, Aaron Runge, 15, and Chris Stewart, number 14. First and 10 for the Trojans. I believe that's the new fullback for the Trojans. Uh, number 21 is in there uh, running his first play. That's Colin Fuller, whom we mentioned earlier, recovering the kickoff uh, fumbled by the Trojans. Short gain on the play at the end. Well, he's coming from the bench here. In the defensive backfield is Blaine uh, Poe at the left half, number 21. Trevor King, who we've mentioned a couple times at the left half. Uh, Rob Dion, number 28 at the right half, and number 20 for the, for the Suns, Joel Flory at the other corner position. There's option, uh, it's dealt outside, and excellent kill by one of the inside linebackers, that's Brad Mitko again, and uh, those linebackers for the Suns are forcing downfield very, very hard. Boy, I'll tell you, they're just stuffing the heck out of that running game. I think they're gonna have to open up the passing a little bit. Uh, uh, maybe Tom Ripple thinks they're going to pass on third down now, so uh, I think they should start passing on first down once in a while and open up that running attack because they're really coming up hard and feeling on the play. You know, good reads that time by Tom as he dealt the ball as he should, but uh, even better defense by the Suns as Tilly is knocked down for no gain whatsoever. It's third and nine for the Trojans, and they'll be punting. Allen steps up and he shanks a punt off the, left, the right side of his foot. And under uh, high school rules uh, to prevent injuries, a short punt like that is whistled dead immediately. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Labolda Golden Suns uh, on the good side of the field as far as they're concerned about the 45 yard line of the Trojans. Well, I'll tell you, they're right in position to take the lead right now because the 45 yard line, uh, the way they can run the ball, that can be one play and she's over. Starting offensive line for the uh, the Suns, I mentioned uh, Scott McNeil at the center, Sonny Fonio and Steve Bauer at the guards, uh, Niall Angeleski and uh, Carlos Butner at the tackles, Grant McLaughlin and Aaron Runge at the tight end. There's the Bitnick back to pass, he's got an out and up and wide open is the tight end and uh, number four for the Suns at the uh, Big Grant McLaughlin and gathers it in for a big, big first down, about a 30-yard first down play. Well, that was an excellent pass by Zabitnik there as McLaughlin that just got in that little soft zone inside the two coverage men there, and he just delivered the ball right on target. See on the replay, uh, Zabitnik from quick feet getting back, delivering the ball. Meanwhile, McLaughlin, the tight end, is running out and up and uh, finds, the, as you said, the hole in the zone and uh, gathers in a big first down. McLaughlin, an outstanding basketball player. I believe he'll be the starting center for the... Uh, defending city champions this year. Second back through is Davy Duke. He's kicking the outside, but uh, gathered in by Steve Tilly, who manages to drag him down for a relatively short gain by Davy Duke standard. Well, the thing about that is if Tilly doesn't make that arm tackle, that sweater tackle, there is six points because there was nobody between uh, Davy Duke and the goal line. We see in the close-up of Davy Duke as he gets back to the huddle, but. Uh, 
virtually dwarfed all of his teammates, including the offensive lineman. He's a big, big young man, as I mentioned earlier. 6'195 pounds, and he seems to have blistering speed. We've mentioned uh, earlier the uh, inside receiver Brad Kopp, the wingback for the uh, Suns, and Darcy Dolan, uh, number two, running the wide receiver position. The big defensive line of the Tom Trojans features Felton in the middle, number 52, Corey Rendick, 58, and Scott McGilvery, 48 at the end. There's the toss to Jesse. Davy Duke makes a good inside-out move, and he's racing to the corner. That's an easy step. Good blocking and uh, even more more important, a good setup of the blocking by David. Oh yeah, just an excellent uh, the way he can use the blocks on that. Uh, Jerry, this is a very intelligent runner. Uh, you know, he just, he's got all the physical potential, but to do the intelligent things as a, a fellow like yourself that's coach running backs, that uh, there's some things that kid has to know and have the instincts on his own and just excellent. You see what an excellent job he did setting up the block of Curran there, who's on number 12, Steve Tilly. Uh, set it up well, gave an inside move, but Tilly went inside and uh, Curran was easy, easy, easily able to steal him to the inside. Well, the flag is down, the, the kick was good, and we'll have to wait for the resolution of the play. Well, Talking to LeBold's cap. Sorry, not, Brian. not even uh, six quarters into the season gone, and uh, David Duke has five touchdowns. Uh, the young Artuna smasher here is uh, looking to just tear this league apart, Jerry. Certainly the uh, Trojan defense, I've been mentioning, very tough up the middle, has been uh, pretty susceptible to the outside attack. The, the perimeter game seems to be a, a little less strong, and Davy Duke is uh, carrying it to shreds right now. Well, the, the big important thing is getting those lead blocks, and the blocks from their tight ends and uh, their, their spot back there uh, to seal everything up. And uh, Davy Duke, once he's through the line, he just uh, is an incredible runner. But uh, those big blocks at the line of scrimmage are very important. And, and Lebovitz, again, is now adding the blocking to the tackling we talked about. And uh, are slowly, well, they have, in fact, uh, quickly taken away complete momentum of the game. The Trojans are going to have to get the ball moving here. The, uh, the point after touchdown was completed. The penalty was against the Tom Trojans. Apparently an offside penalty as Lebovitz is kicking off from the 50. Score 14 now for the Lebovitz Golden Sun. 12 for Tom. Uh, 14 points uh, quickly put on the board by the uh, the Suns, having come back from their 12 nothing uh, deficit. Gollum kicks off and is bouncing around, gathered in finally at the 15-yard line. I believe that that's Tilly, number 12, who kicks it to the outside, and uh, again a good tackle downfield by the Suns takes him down at the 35. The Suns are really starting to lay some punishing hits out there. I tell you, Jerry, at this point of the game, uh, I would say uh, since the start of the second quarter, the uh, the Lebovitz Golden Suns team is physically intimidating the Tom Trojans. They are really knocking them around out there. First and 10 for uh, the Trojans on the 35-yard line. And again, as you mentioned earlier, the uh, Suns crowding pretty close to the line of scrimmage. Quick hitch pass coming out wide to the wide receiver. He's uh, in a running situation. Nice That's tackle. number 17, uh, Mitch Davis, uh, at starting at the split end position. Excellent tackle on the outside. Well, see, they have number 25 over there, and they just try to hook up with that pass and get one block downfield. And had he been able to miss, uh, evade that initial tackler there, he had a lot of room and a block all in front of him. But he couldn't evade that tackle. Sure tackling again. Five-yard gain on the first down play for the Trojans. It's going to be first, uh, second and five. 5.56 and counting, remaining here in the first half of this RAFL game. There's a power off tackle left, and uh, uh, McClellan manages to drop his shoulder and pick up a couple of yards, but uh, waiting again at the line of scrimmage, one of those inside backers, that's number 15 for the, uh, the Suns, Aaron Runge, the big middle linebacker, and uh, uh, he's not giving any ground at all. So Jeff McClellan is satisfied only with the one yard gain, it's third and four. Well, if Harry Duke, if Harry Duke were a gambling man, which I'm not sure whether he is or not, uh, he may just come after this punt this time. On the other hand, he's got uh, Byron Davy, who's the phenom, uh, waiting to gather in the punt and uh, got to feel pretty good about a running back of that uh, caliber waiting for it. Excellent, excellent kick away this time by uh, Kelly. It's down to the 30-yard line, gathering 
in is Brad Kopp, and Ricky exactly. wrestled to the, to the turf very, very quickly. Kelly Allen with uh, an excellent punt, except for one that he shanked off the side of his foot, uh, uh, just in doing a super job for the Trojan school. Well, this is a big series here, the old cliche, but uh, the Trojans have to establish on defense that they can start being aggressive like they were in the first quarter. Uh, they've got to shut the Lebolas Golden Suns down now. They're in, inside their own 30-yard line. Mentioned the defensive line for the Trojans. Outside linebackers, Darren Cabisco, number 73, on the left side. Right side linebackers, Rick West, number 17. Inside linebackers, Rob Pedersen, 34, and Jeff McCollin, 24. High formation still for the Suns. There's Kern uh, leading behind Davy Duke this time, and he's able to find the outside, oh, rushed through the arms now. of a couple of uh, Trojans, and is rambling in the open field. Nice block. He's down inside the 30-yard line, takes on the tackler, and uh, drags him down inside the 25. Just a super run there by Kern, but again, number 17, Brad Kopp, just does a super job of downfield blocking, like about 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. He just throws an excellent block. Could be able to pick it up there. Some nice cut there by Chris Kern. Just an excellent cut. He runs like Jason Milano, a little short legs. Just a pump, and there's a block by Kopp. Just a super job. But I tell you, when you get those football players get, getting downfield and throwing blocks like that, that's when you score in those long ones. Just that's, a super job. That's right. It's the offside blockers, the difference between a five-yard gain and a touchdown. Zvitnik, the quarterback, second back through, Davy Duke, and uh, he's hit at the line and uh, manages to break the tackle, but stumbles to the turf after a very short game at perhaps half a yard. He's second and close to 10. 405 remaining in the first half of play. As you mentioned, uh, when they're running uh, at the line of scrimmage at the, uh, at the front five of the... Uh, the Trojans, uh, really not much to be gained for the bowlers, but the perimeter seems soft. Motion, flank, flanker spread to either side. There's a leadoff tackle to Davy Duke, and uh, again a good lead block by Curran, kicks him to the outside, and Davy Duke's got the speed to get to the court. Well, no doubt about that. They're getting those little blocks that they need, and away they go. Another first down for the Bolas, uh, this time down to the 12-yard line, 13-yard line of Tom, and uh, looks as though they're virtually unstoppable, at least in this quarter of play, as uh, they've come back for 14 big points, and they look as though they're on the verge of adding some more. Well, I look at that defensive huddle of Tom's, and their defensive line are all limping around. They've got about two or three guys bent over. They're getting beat up at this point. But I don't know if they can beat Tom's Trojans up for too long, but they are right now. There's Kern again, cutting back and uh, really showing tenacious running as he drags along number 19, one of the linebackers, Rick West, the outside backer for a lot of yards. There's a flag down uh, in the uh, area of the tack, and we'll have to wait for the officials to let us know what's going Another call. flag back uh, near the original line of scrimmage that came fairly late uh, here as uh, it was uh, really late. The tackle was pretty well being made when that flag was thrown. Here we see the official about to give us a call. It's a big, big one against the Suns. Uh, two penalties, illegal use of hands, they're holding, and objectionable conduct. And from the look of uh, what was happening on the screen, I'd have to guess that the ball carrier, cop, or pardon me, uh, Kern is the one guilty of the objectionable conduct penalty. But from being in a uh, very close to scoring position down at the three yard line, suddenly they're way back at the 32. Oh, I at, tell you. Uh, first and 30, I think. Well, when in doubt, give the, the ball to Davy just. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Either that or a uh, ball upside. Uh, young Zabitnik hasn't thrown any passes yet, but uh, boy, he's got a nice arm. There's play action. He's continuing to roll. Davy Duke's open in the flats and uh, just beyond his reach. Uh, didn't look like there's going to be too much yardage there available, but uh, mind you, when Davy Duke's got the ball and uh, gets the ramble, who knows what will happen. Another flag drive. Now there was really good pressure on that play, Jerry, from the uh, defensive line on the top shows. It actually looks like they stunted a little bit. And this one's going to be against the Lebola Golden Suns. And I'll tell you, it's the Lebola and Golden Suns. We'll see if we can pick up the call here. Holding against the Suns. Boy, that's going to be first and about 40. But the Golden Suns have uh, one thing against them. They took well in excess of uh, 100 
five yards and suddenly Zaska, and there's a timeout now, and I think Harry Duke is just gonna lay some leather on these guys about taking these penalties and that sort of stuff. They've gotta stay away from the penalties and uh, start to accept the discipline. They got a very talented football team, but uh, they're really hurting themselves this game. That must be about six or seven calls against them in the first half alone. Well, they're in an unenviable position right now at the 42-yard line of the Tom Trojans. It's first and 40, and, uh, you know, as a long-time offensive coach myself, Ryan, I, when I look into my ready sheet, I really don't have that many first and 40 plays uh, sitting around ready to be drawn upon. Yep, they got a quick kick. Have a minute to two and Rougeau. Well, you can uh, you can pull. That's an old rider play. It's a quick kick. You get it blocked, and you give up the Rougeau. Yeah. Well, Jerry, uh, we've just got a little time out here. I'd like to say hello to uh, my mother, Mrs. Myrna Seif, who's uh, pretty sick up in the, in the uh, Paso Hospital. And uh, I rest assured that I'll be taking Dad out for supper and keeping him well fed uh, until he gets better. And then you can feed me again, Mom. All right. And I'd just like to say, too, she's the best-looking lady up there. Obviously, uh, no genetic carryover to yourself, right? Yeah, I know. I was uh, ugly one. Anyway, back to the game with 3-0-1 left in the first half. The Golden Suns from the bowl is 14 and the Trojans from Tom 12. After getting into a 12-0 lead, uh, the Trojans have fell behind here. But they look a lot better. Like, they look more aggressive. Maybe that's what's causing the holding penalties out there. People blow by you can to stick out the big mitt. Here's Bitnick back to pass again. Uh, lots of heat being shown. He eludes one tackle and finally delivers the ball. And it's gathered in. I... I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't number 35 catch. No, number 15, Aaron Runs, the tight end, gathering the ball. And uh, a lot of running around for about a five-yard game, right? Well, I'll tell you, they really came pouring in on that side. And I noticed uh, 40, 48 Scott McGilvery was uh, just uh, sailing in there. And for a minute there, it looked like Zabitnik was going to try to outrun him. And he took one look and decided to throw it. Uh, Scott McGilvery, a big, tough kid, uh, uh, threatening me every time I go to pick up movies at Acme Video, and uh, I, I throw the ball away too. I usually throw the videos away. Runs doing a lot of running and a really good job coming back and finding the hole to help out his beleaguered quarterback. Here's the toss to Davy Duke coming left this time. Cuts back against the flow. Excellent cut and, and uh, finally drags down a, a good tackle downfield by outside linebacker Darren Cavisto, but uh, he's not until Davy Duke had picked up another 13 or 14 yards. Well, I tell you, I just don't know how you stop that guy without a big net or something. He is just exciting. Let's watch this and replay. Watch how he can cut back against the grain. A couple of people thought they had real good shots at him, but he ran right out of their arms. Uh, uh, linebacker uh, McCollum thought he had him, and uh, no such luck. It's uh, third down and 20 from the 22, and we see the Golden Sun, Dollum preparing to try, or at least appearing to try, a, a, a field goal. No, he's a good field goal player. Ball is up and it's wide, and uh, Tilly runs the ball out of the end zone and uh, leans ahead, and way up to the 13-yard line. It looks as though if, if he hadn't lost his balance, he made a pick up to the yard. Boy, I'll tell you, number 48 for the Tom Trojans unloaded the, uh, down there. The really good hit, that's Scott McGilvery. And uh, he really pounded a guy, and I noticed there's a little uh, extracurricular activity out there. Seems to me like the Boulder Sun gave him a shovel in the play. We'll pick up the call from the Zebras. They're about to talk to the Lebola captains, uh, doubtlessly some kind of a blocking call. Sexual conduct against Scott McGilvery on the play. One of the good things about being that close to your own end zone is that you don't have to give up the full yardage. They uh, march off only six yards, and it's down to the six-yard line. However, it's first and ten with 2.13 remaining in the half for the Tom Trojan. Seems to be some difficulty. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven on the field for Tom. Well, that's as good a reason as any to take a timeout. So here, here go ahead, Brian. You don't need those timeouts late in the game anyway. Actually, it's two minutes and thirteen seconds left, and uh, Coach Alex Smith has got a time to uh, to let his uh, brain cool down a bit and think of something and uh, send in some offense. And they got to get the ball moving. They remain with one first down on the clock, Jerry, and uh, twelve points and. It's Indicative of the uh, tough uh, defense. I think that uh, Martin Monarchs had one first down in, uh, in the whole first half against, uh, pardon me, they had two. Uh, one was a long play, a trick play, and the other one was a touchdown uh, in, in their first half against the Boulder. So the, the Suns definitely come over with a fired up defense when they play. This time 12 players on for Tom, they're ready to go. And a naked bootleg action by Tom, and he got absolutely no game that time. Uh, a lot of 
most people in white standing around looking a little bit nonplussed and uh, maybe a broken play there, Brian. Well, I'll tell you what, if that's what you're going to do in your timeouts, don't call them anymore. Maybe you should run it with 11 guys. Second and 10 for the Trojans. Just over two minutes remaining in this first half of play. And of course, there's nothing that the Suns would like better than to hold the Trojans right here, uh, get the ball turned over in good position and pop another one in before the half. Well, the, the Trojans definitely going to have to look at ways to get outside because they're having a heck of a time trying to run inside. That pitch has been shut down. I don't think it's time to pass. Here's Austin again. Uh, Thomas gathers it up and Good turns job. it upfield, and he's uh, out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Good-looking Austin that time by Collins. Well, he's pretty sweet on that one, Jerry. He knows when to tuck that ball in, and he's got the old swivel hips. He runs a lot like uh, uh, Brian Ross, the uh, former tailback of the Martin Monarch, who's now uh, walking around on one leg these days. But he's got good moves. He reads pretty well in this. Well, I guess the name reading. Yeah, we can see number 48, Steve Bauer, the outside linebacker for the Suns, coming down on the dive back, uh, Pedersen, and uh, yanked the ball, took the option outside. There's a give inside that time to Pedersen, and boy, there was just nowhere to go. And I think you're right, Brian. It seems that the, uh, the Suns are running some kind of a slant on every play. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're not playing it head up. And I know the Trojans have a heck of a good offensive line. Uh, they were just devastating against Luther last week, or uh, pardon me, against Luther, against the O'Neill Titans last week. And uh, they don't seem to be able to get good blocks these guys. They seem to be slanting in the holes all the time. They'll have to do some bigger than half time on how to block that. 136 remaining in this first half of play. Second and 10 for the, the Trojans. There's power off tackle, uh, giving the ball pretty deep. That's uh, number 24, I believe, Jeff McClellan, the right halfback, and he's got himself a short game. And then the Suns call timeout with 123 left here in a punch situation. The old master head coach, Harry Duke, longtime head coach at, uh, at the Boulders, using his timeouts well here. He's going to have lots of time to score if they get the ball in good field position. <laughs> You see the uh, the defensive coordinator in the lower part of your screen, the defensive coordinator for Lavoldis, Tom Ripple, illegally on the field, talking to his charges. I understand that there's a mark uh, chastised for doing just that last week. Yeah, but he said he'd sit down in the field, and there's no way they could get him off, so they didn't argue too much with him. Anyhow, the, the real purpose of this timeout, of course, really just to, to uh, uh, stop the clock. There really wasn't a lot that uh, I would guess that uh, that Ripple could be saying to his uh, oh. defensive team as they've been uh, playing pretty good football and really not much need for advice. Hey, Tom Ripple could say a lot if he was in the sewer and somebody just flushed the toilet. That man can talk an awful lot. We see that it's Kopp and uh, number 12, uh, Chris Kerr in the fullback, back to receive the punt. Gets the ball blocked, but he gets it away, and it's going to bounce. Gets a good roll. Curran gathers it in about his own 47, makes a cut back, and lowers his head oh. and punishes the tackler. Oh, did he ever punish that tackler, who bounces right back up, but that was a whiplash case if there ever was one. Into the 54-yard line of the Tom Trojans are the LaBoldis Trojan Suns. They're going to start there first and 10. Leading already in this game, 14 to 12. Uh, courtesy primarily the, the big, big running plays of their uh, dynamite tailback, Byron Davies. The frightening part is he's in grade 11. Just a kid. Uh, maybe he'll move. Again. Here's the lead to Davy Duke and mm. an excellent inside out fill that time by 52, the nose back to Felton, driving Davy Duke to the turf after a short game, perhaps two and a half yards. Well, straight ahead, they got 109 left on the play there, Jerry, in about a second and eighth position. I would think that uh, they'll probably run a play. <laughs> well, once again, Brian, your uh, mastery of the situation in football in every way, shape, and form uh, doesn't fail to astound me. Well, I look for Curran to run the ball on this play. I think maybe on that little misdirection play there. Well, they've got Curran in the, as that tailback last time. It was he who carried the ball last time. Uh, behind uh, a new uh, fullback, that's number five, Brad Mitchell, a linebacker. And there's McLaughlin open oh. in the zone again, and an excellent ball by Zabitnik, but McLaughlin just unable to gather it in. Well, that was a pretty good ball there, and McLaughlin just seemed to hold up on his pattern a little bit there, Jerry. 
Uh, once he went to it, uh, those big long arms, and he can move pretty good for a big man, too. He just couldn't quite get there. But I think about uh, 15 yards down the field, he held up on his counter just a bit. That was an excellent throw again by Zabednik. He can really pick that soft spot. For anyone who happens to be wondering, just stand the sidelines. Uh, Byron Davy is just standing, uh, uh, apparently in fine health, 35 yard line. So it wasn't an injury that caused him to be off the field. The ball is one man short on his punt team. The Trojans come after the ball, but a good kick away uh, by Dahlem. It bounces at about the eight yard line and gathered in by Davis at the eight. He's ahead to the 11 and it's gonna be first down from that point. 33 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Well, it's time for the Trojans to run a couple plays here, Jerry. Do you think they've got anything in the bag? Do you think they might try to take them downtown with a pass? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them ground the ball twice. Go in uh, satisfied to be down by only two, really after having been uh, uh, really taken to task here in the second quarter by a very, very aggressive Lobola Golden Sun team. <laughs> John Dunster, the center for the Trojans. Uh, Dave Smith and John Rudrum are the guards. Sheldon Thomas, as we mentioned before, the quarterback. There's Option. Uh, Thomas uh, hits the seam and turns it upfield. He's up to the 25-yard line for first down. Play took six seconds, 26 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Well, they didn't pass and they didn't ground the ball, so maybe we should get Erwin Clinton up here to figure out what they're going to do next. Yeah, but he'd explain it to us in German, and that'd be no good at all. First and 10 for the Trojans from the 25-yard uh, line, and the play run in from Morris Butler, the, deep, the offensive coordinator for the Trojans. Motion across by the slot. There's option the other side. Uh, good cut up field by Thomas, but that swarming Lebola defense shuts him down. With four seconds remaining in the first half of play, it's going to be second down at about nine or eight. Eight yards for the uh, Tom Cage. Well, so far in this game there, they've had two plays that have worked. That's pass and the uh, Thomas running the ball and keeping it himself and the option a couple times. I'm sure that the uh, Tom Trojans will make some adjustments in the second half. I'll guarantee you they'll come on a lot more physical in the second half. The clock has run down, uh, barring penalty, the last play of the first half. There's Thomas again on the option. Excellent block. Uh, pardon me, uh, the referee says it's a clip. And Thomas is driven to the turf after he gains the first down about the 43-yard line. <laughs> You see the officials uh, talking the situation over. Uh, clearly, they were calling an illegal block from behind against one of the Trojans, and it's a matter, a decision for the uh, Lebolus Golden Sun coaching staff to decide whether or not to give them one more play. Well, I think they'll simply decline the penalty and end the quarter. And they do. So at the end of the second quarter of play, here in this uh, exciting RIFL action, the score is uh, 14 for the Lebolus Golden Sun, 12 for the Tom Trojans. Super game so far, looking forward to a super second half. Yeah, I want to see some more of that good hitting we saw this first half by both teams. 